Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hope everyone's day is great and going wonderful. I started a few seconds early because I do what I want. And yeah, everything's great. Uh, I just had to run to get something from the front door a few minutes before my stream, so I'm a little bit frazzled, but that's life. Oh, no. I always pick that up and I forget to drink it as I do. Okay. <laughs> I am, thank you very much. Hope your day goes really good with that new computer coming in. Oh, I'm so excited to see how it works. Or like, see how you like how it works. Oh, <laughs> that's always exciting. I just, I love when new tech comes in. Especially when you get to test it out and then it's like just mint. But yes, today, we're doing part four, part four, Dream Daddy. And where was I? I think I just had my date with Robert. No, I tried to date Robert. Didn't go so hot. Um, he ghosted me basically. <sighs> um, but then I think I met up with Craig and Matt. Not hundred percent sure. Um, we'll see where we start off because I can't quite remember where we left off last time, yesterday. Not very long ago. Should have better, better memory. I don't though, so also okay. But I hope everyone's having a great day. Um, life is swimming by fast but slow sometimes. And we should all have a good time doing it. At least I think so. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. Eat a lot of broccoli. Dad tip. <laughs> oh god. Where was I? I'm definitely trying to get... Like, I'm Team Craig. For sure. For sure. For sure. <sighs> I don't think our date went too great last time. Um, Who else went really well? Brian and Damien? Brian I can't stand being around, though. It's not Brian at all. It's my character. He's just such a sore loser and competitive with Brian. And it's just like, give it a rest, man. Um, let's try Damien, because he's always funky. He's always a funky dude. Got things going on. Take care of your health while you're still young. As I drink an energy drink. <laughs> Parsley, onion, eggs make a really nice omelette. Okay, that's what that said. Make sure to sweep under your tent so you don't sleep on rocks. Very true. Oh, I have horrible memories of this time. Where we went camping and it was like, the campsite was like tilted. And rocky and we were in a tent and it was just not a good time because I couldn't sleep and it was like angled down and there was rocks it was awful open dad book start writing a message when a man walks in the door you got a letter oh is it from grandma oh Aww. no it's from Damien oh oh right he like or he likes to write them I'm okay with that can I see it old parchment folded into an envelope sealed with purple wax Dude does go all out. I pry off the seal or pry off the seal and unfold the letter in the most beautiful calligraphy. The letter reads. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dear Slummy, I hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying. One can only hope that my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that greatly enjoyed our time together. I wrote this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I might misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might <laughs> forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon my <laughs> may have derailed by forces unseen, your companionship helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the moral of my, of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, Lemmy, if you allow me, it would mean the world to me if I could enjoy more of your time, perhaps a trip to the cinema, followed by a moonlit stroll, would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response with great respect. D. Blood March. You know what? I'm having different thoughts on Damien. Like, as as much as wordy as he is and stuff, and like vampiresque, he's like totally romantic. Aww. And he is definitely hitting on Lemmy, despite Craig being like Team Craig, you know. Woo. Um. I don't know, he kind of still seems like a bro because they were friends in, high, in university, college, whatever. But, I don't know. There's just something about Damien. 
got my laptop shot. We have to write him back a real letter. Yeah. Amanda knows what's up. My handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool. Will you help me? I need to class this up. Dad, father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets to a show that you two will like, then enclose them in the letter. That's, yeah, that's not a bad idea at all. Meta and I hop onto my laptop to, per to uh, pursue showtimes. He doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. What kind of movies does he like? I can't even remember. Oh my god. Is it going to make me pick? I think he liked romantic con comedies. Or was it like era movies? Oh god. Critically acclaimed exploration into... Oh god. Turns into a vampire trope on its head. I don't think he'll like that. Lots of blood and vampire titties is what it said. <laughs> Well, let's roll the dice. Purchase the tickets and print them out and sit down on the table with Amanda to try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. Oh, God. Good morning to this to you on this fine eve. I hope that this letter finds you in good health. De Dear Damien. Hey. <laughs> sure. Sure. Let's do that. What's next? Uh, hey, remember when your son tried to cast, oh, that kid, where he bricked the kid around, like, put bricks around the kid in the bottom of the basement school? It was Hugo's son? And it was, like, bribed by wine or something? Uh, you been good? I must confess my amateur control of the written word. <laughs> you been good. Oh. Jeez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Mm. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. Oh, you find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves on the last we met. That earnest shit was pretty messed up. <laughs> oh god, which one? Mm. Find me in good spirits, sure. Mm. Ask him to hang out already. Yeah, sure. True art takes time, Amanda. Strange told you events. I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. Once the fall of Icarus, I found myself lost in your details. Um, let me, let me uh get at that. What? <laughs> okay. Oh God. He does he like art? I can't. Yes, he paints mm. landscapes. Dad, whoa. Is it too much? I saw it on TV. I'm not actually an intelligent person. Bring it home, pops. Let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movie. I would very much enjoy your company. Company me to the cinema. Escort you to the cinema. Oh. Smooth. Calling it the cinema is a classy move. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies, which I'm sure you'll find both titillating and enjoyable. Oh, hard daps. Namaste. We'll carry on. Best wishes. What's normal response there? Sign my name, my full name. Fancier that way. Lemon, Lemmy Sour. I kind of regret naming him that completely. Then again, all the other um, dads also have really bad names, so. Oh, look at his child writing. <laughs> yeah, it says exactly what we picked. Oh god. I spelled his name wrong. What? Aww. Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. Oh, good. Now all you have to do is seal it and put it in the mailbox and seal it with tape. That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. She's gonna go light a candle and pour it on. A small piece of wood. It'll have a wax seal. Starts to burn down from a pool of melted wax. What's the other thing? Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses the small piece of wood onto it. She lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing... And here it is, your sigil. Little kitten with a bow on its head. <laughs> awesome. Scrapbooking stuff always comes in a clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is deliver it to his doorstep now, huh? Mm. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do mm. it. It's too much work. I already called my guy. Mm. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. Oh my god. Can I mention again how much I love Amanda? <laughs> Don't get the pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know any if any of this is true. 
actually reminds me of this time where I was camping and there was a like a carrier pigeon like an actual train one and it had like the little um cast like case thing on its leg to hold letters I think it got caught in a storm so um head outside and walk to Damien's house slip the letter in the slot on his door and go back home um mm -hmm. he was fine and everything um but I think we had a call well the campsite people called to get him picked up well now we play the waiting game the night finally trolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night and the theater is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. This is going to be a, a horror show. I jump at the sound of his voice and I turn around to see Damien right behind me. He almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? Ah! I don't know, I just walked up. My apologies to, for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it gonna rain soon? Huh. I didn't hear anything. It's the aesthetic, Lemmy. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, no. Regardless, the hour glows clo uh, grows close. Hmm. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Oh. Please allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids or perhaps Milk Duds. Please do, sir. Let's do it. We buy snacks, we're waiting, we hear a familiar voice behind us. Oh, my dad's here. Oh, great, it's Lucian. Standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Huh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, dad. Hmm. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are just making me see some kids movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Oh. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire's Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. Probably rated R, what? that's why you can't go. You watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Nope, he likes romantic comedies. Ha, huh, good luck with that, Dad. He joins his friends and look over to Damien. Good luck with that. Stephanie, my son loves to tease. Oh god, I bet he's like skittish. We wait in line for a little longer and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous, I wonder what's wrong. Maybe ask him. Damien and I take our seats a little settle in for the previews, glancing at him, I can see he's sweating profusely. Damn, he's really scared. And gripping his arm rest. Vampires, huh? Alright, is everything okay? Most normal response there. Everything is perfectly fine. I'm so uh, excited for this film. He doesn't seem very excited. I'm a devoted patron of art, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Doesn't sound very... You have a favorite horror movie? I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town Terrifying. I love Halloween Town. <laughs> like, I'm not even gonna argue with that. That's a good pick. Oh, interesting. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some sort of a uh, strange foreign horror film that I've never heard of. Dr Damien's knuckles are turning white. He looks like he's about to rip, rip the armrest off. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? Whoa. You must be joking. I love horror movies. Oh, he's looking at the little attitude he's putting up to impress Lemmy. He's so rem He's like actually interested. Like Craig is just kind of- oh god. Craig is just kind of like bro. He's like, work out with me, work out with me. But Damien's like putting aside the things that he likes and dislikes to try to impress Lemmy. In a sense, that's the most that I think all the other dads have done. I apologize, I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. <laughs> we settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. Ugh. Oh god. Poor guy. I mean, like, I'm not saying you should just, like, do whatever the other person wants, but, like, he's putting an effort in and we can see that. He's all frightened. It's kind of really, it's really cute, actually. The title flashes across the screen in bloody ledge letters. I'm mumbling. Uh, Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. Huh. I kind of want to watch that though. Like, personally. A uh, pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and a well-oiled ab sit up in a coffin. <laughs> Awake in my coven. Two more vampires slide the tops of their stone coffins to the floor. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband but also mortal enemy? It is time? The three look at each other and then to the camera. What is this? Romulus, uh, Demetrius, and Carmela. Th those are very, yeah, vampire names. 
especially Romulus. I haven't seen that forever. Um, for the Vampire Crusade. Oh god, it's like the office. The trio of vampires fly off into the night uh, as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. You know what it's remind reminding me of? Um, what we do in the shadows. That's a good movie. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flip. Ah. We get to this a tense moment of the movie where Romulus True Blood. <sighs> so close to Damien's actual name, Damien uh, Blood March. Um, sits at the truce meeting with the general of the human army whose wife Romulus has fall fallen in love with. Oh god, it's finally good to meet you. General, I agree, it's good to finally blood you. Oh my. Romulus reach leaps out and slashes. I can't even speak. Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood, sp blood splatters over everything, including the camera. Ah. Damien screams again, reflecti reflectively. Reflexively? Grasp me my hands. I don't know, words aren't working right now. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric blood. Ah. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Mm. Damien retracts his hand and places it back in his lap. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic and I got to an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. Maybe I could get uh do something to try and make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. <laughs> oh, what would help? Maybe lightening up? Lightening up. They all like dad jokes. Yes. Where does a dog go when it loses its tail? What? Where? To the retail fuck. <laughs> to the retail store. <laughs> I yell that last bit a little too loud as for a crowded movie theater, but I can see a smile form on Damien's hmm. face. Good one, Lemmy. Huh. The rest of the movie goes by rev rev relatively I don't know why I'm saying things weird. Rev relatively smoothie, with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked a romantic comedy better. He would have. It's in his profile. You could have read it. We get to the final scene of the movie where Romulus bad blood. Wasn't it true blood? Not bad blood. And the general's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts. Our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out hard. Oh Hi. no. The, fa the film fades to black and the end appears on the screen. But then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, Carmela, who watches the two from afar. Oh no. Twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next Vampire, Fire, <laughs> vampire Crusade 3. Did we miss the first one? This is the second run. No wonder we were so lost. Evil must die again. More thunder, more arm. Omnius? Omnius. Nope. Omnius. Nope. I'm not gonna try. The movie <laughs> fades out again and the bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Okay, it wasn't like horrible, horrible. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst uh, throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little bit more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. Ugh. Hi, Benny. How's your day so far? What an interesting film, while the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian. I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in, reg in regards to vampiric lore. You ate too much, Benny? Oh no. You got a food coma going on? I feel it. Wow. <laughs> you deadlifted a lot. Oof. I guess you needed it. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Da huh. <laughs> Benny, you missed out. <laughs> Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Hmm. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk in the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater. You did. You missed Vampire Tid. <laughs> not actual. You couldn't see it, but in theory, yes. <laughs> he thinks I'm lovely. That's so cute. Damn, okay. Here comes the smooth response. Describe it to you. It was, um... Dads on dads. <laughs> Damn. Okay, here comes smooth response. Oh god. None of these are smooth. Called me lovely. 
thanks. Oh. <laughs> no problem. I crushed it. He's so awkward. The vampire tid, not the dads. <laughs> we only saw the dads. The dads saw the tids. Unfortunately, I'm not an actual dad, so I didn't get to see the tids. We both stand here feeling a little awkward. I sure am one smooth operator. You're really not, Lemmy. Are you getting a little hungry? Maybe we could we could maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Are we going to go to Matt's cafe? Worry not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and we're greeted by the gates of a cemetery. <laughs> what? Are you going to go in there? A little bit of Victorian flavor, Lemmy. Trust me. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. What's with this music? I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we cross a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I hand it to him. Gotta hand it to him. For being in a cemetery, this is strangely romantic. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. It is, actually. An appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie wouldn't you say what people used to do when they visited their loved ones is they would have picnics around their grave um, with a flourish Damien produced a blanket and picnic basket it was also very uh, like a community area too um, wait where you hide and of course we're talking Victoria there's different cultures and stuff that do different things um, <laughs> under my cloak he's hiding food in his cloak this whole time I folds the blanket and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. Just pulling out the whole thing. In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural gra uh, graveyards became a more popular alternative to church bur burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and find sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard but you had trouble hang handling a scary movie? Oh, I I wasn't... He sighs deeply. Oh yes. I was extremely scared by that movie. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I could tell. I just have never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act people expect me to love horror films so I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have a, the constitution for them at times. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. It's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one. Thanks for your, thanks to your help. Graveyards, however. I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. Oh god, my connection cut out. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night. You're not really alone, dude. But I actually feel very peaceful. It's kind of nice. Suddenly it doesn't seem like we're alone. Okay. Off in the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. Oh god. What is that? I'm not sure. I know it notices us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly towards us, its shape taking up more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting closer and moving faster. Woof. Oh, it's a dog. If I oh, it's so cute! It finally comes into the light. The friendliest, dummy list, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Boston Terriers, Betty? The do dog trots over to Damien and sniffs at his hand. No, there's, they're kind of ugly cute, like pugs. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Oh. What a beautiful dog. <laughs> Hey, who's the owner? Is it gonna be Robert's kid? It's totally gonna be Robert's kid because he has a dog and we haven't seen the dog yet. Um, dogs are like that, um, uh, like that are a crime against nature. You know what? I don't even know what they looked like originally before they were bred to be like that, so 
they might actually be. Though again, um, I think most dogs have been bred a certain way. Wolf. Y yeah, okay. They look like a wolf. Okay, I get it. But I mean like how pugs were like like bred to have like the in like nose flat face kind of thing. And I have wolf dogs, okay? They're very derpy. They definitely don't look like dogs though. Like when they're next to other dogs, you can tell they don't look like dogs. It's really weird. Um, but when you just see them, they look like a dog. All dogs look like a wolf until humans made them disgusting meatballs. <laughs> Benny with the dog discourse. If you have a puck or something gross like that, this dog goes to jail. Uh, my mom has a puck. He's actually like a tall pug though. He's like healthy and stuff. We both look up, not expecting to see. Thanks, Robert. It's his dog. Knew it. What are you doing out here on this lovely evening? Mom's going to jail. I guess she is. <laughs> Benny's taking her to jail. What? I didn't know you had a dog. We went to his house for dinner and he said he had a dog and we heard it barking. Oh. This isn't- what? This is weirder. I found her watering in the street, I put a leash on her, and now we're walking around this graveyard together. Mm. Hunting cryptids. Okay, I can respect. Dave mm. and I share a look. May I give her a treat? Mm. Cheese? Wouldn't give her cheese though. Mm. Not to worry. <gasps> oh my god! Damien reaches into the depths of the coat and produces a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? <laughs> right? Oh, like, steal my heart. He has a pocket full of dog treats. <laughs> the dog laps up at the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damon continues to smooth down the, her fur. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hey. My absolute ple pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. He was just grave robbing. <laughs> hey, hey. It was picnic time, and then Robert was hunting for some reason. Good, Damien. Yeah, you like Damien? I do. Mm. I think I'm. it's kind of like hard. I'm like Teen Craig, but also hi. Yes, hi, Inky. Can I call you that? Um, lovely to meet you, my friend. May our path cross again. Robert and his dog disappear into the darkness. Yes, yes. Perfect. Oh, thank you for the follow as well, Inky. Um, Robert, I hope you're enjoying it. And you, your team, Damien, I think. Dave, uh, Robert and his dog disappeared in the darkness. I didn't know you liked dogs. New information. All good. Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, which as a terrier, such as a terrier or a Maltese. Cool. Nice. I know, it's like, it's kind of like Team Craig, Team Damien. We finally got a Twilight-esque um, rival going on. I finally think big dogs are nice too. Yeah man, dogs are cool. Oh. I do believe we had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? He is so romantic. Like that's what's getting to me. Like the whole talking and stuff that he does, it gets a bit <sighs> like extended or whatever. It takes a bit to get used to, but honestly he's the mo he's the one that's putting in the most effort and is actually being quite forward with his feelings and the others are just kind of like hanging out and like yeah they talk about dates but they don't really put anything forward i think yeah damien hops um to his feet and extends a hand to help me up i got i gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be he packs up his picnic basket and leads us out to the graveyard as out of the graveyard as we begin our walk home i take one last look at the cemetery it really is beautiful mm. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. I don't think you can do that anymore in graveyards, though. Pretty sure they're all locked at night. Ever so kindly for your company tonight. Let's, sir, I'm pretty sure I was not in the mood for dating, but then you over here <laughs> being romantic and stuff. Yes, right? Gets your heart going. I started this one on Valentine's Day, so this game at least. I think it was a good pick for it. Let me, if you allow me, uh, I would bring me, it would, <laughs> <coughs> sorry, my throat's dry. I really need to stay hydrated. Oh. Let me, if you allow me, I would bring, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. <laughs> Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a fo folded monogrammed hand handkerchief? Really? 
He presses it into my hand. It's like a, a token. Does Damien like clowns? Like, like that's my question. Wait, is that like a positive or a negative? Are you like wanting him to like clowns? <laughs> um, I will use this to dry my tears for those I've lost. Can't wait to sneeze on this. Please don't say that to me. I'm gonna wave this at passing ships. Okay, right, he lost his wife, that's true. A noble purpose. Huh. And you know what, I don't know if you guys has ever seen like a monogram handkerchief that somebody owns. It's classy as fuck. Just saying. <laughs> Shuffles his feet. Like it sounds really like weird, but when you see it in person, it's like, oh God. It's like when somebody has a business card and you're just like, don't have business cards at all. You're like, I kind of want one of those. I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you, someone who's open to my eccentricities. I am a clown character, so I'm questioning. <laughs> Are you clowning? It's nice to feel so accepted. Um, thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Were they holding hands? No. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Uh, I must take my leave. Good night walks across the street basically and care all of these dads are hot yeah pretty much except Robert's really weird unlock the door and step inside <laughs> like a whirlwind Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch trying to look nonchalant she was totally fine hey dad what's up were you watching me from the window yes no I was just uh hmm. all the dads are hot but Damien Inky's getting flustered. <laughs> that was the movie. Lots of vampire titties. <laughs> See, Benny, I told you. But as it turns out, Damien is skip. Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep it between me and Damien. <laughs> scary cool. Yep, he's so cool. It's scary. Nice save, Lemmy. Do you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? Huh. I think I'm misremembering that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. Yeah. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? True. He was wandering the streets alone. How can you be sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can, be I, how can I be sure you're not a werewolf? Amanda's eyes narrow. Uh. I don't trust you. <laughs> Nor I, you. Hmm. You make an intense, wary eye contact for the second. This, hmm. this relationship, father-daughter relationship, I live for. It's really, like... What's... What's the word? It's like not the average, obviously, but it's like super healthy. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Um, don't stay up too late, will ya? All I want is Damien to like, to like me so I can just hold hands and get forehead kisses. <laughs> yes. I feel that. You want him to come out of the screen? Forehead kisses are nice. Let's see my daddy points. Dad points. Daddy points. My total. S class. Wow. Yes. My stars, this. I wish Never Damien in a was real. Moons have I had a date such as exquisite as this one? <laughs> Maybe he is somewhere. Maybe Damien is. One day you'll find your Damien, Inky. His voice, yeah. I wonder who voices it. Um, it's a beautiful night, and the air smells so fresh, so I decide to take a long way home. Take the long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, uh, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with a low crime rate and wide, walkable sidewalks at night. Let me look. Yes, because it's made by the Game Grumps, right? The, this game. So, um, they had some certain people voice certain characters or something like that. Um, as I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. This is where I went the first night I was playing this game and I met Robert and Mary, might I add Mary, who is Joseph's wife, um, who flirted with me and then I slept with Robert also that night. <laughs> and now it's a lot of drops of water. Oh no, it's gonna rain. Maybe I should wait this one out inside. I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. The bar is usually crowded and the feeling of camaraderie over a shared love for the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. <laughs> oh god. Just calling it the game. I look into the corner and spot none other than Mary sitting alone in the corner, nursing a cocktail. J 
Jason Larock. Someone Jason Larock. I don't know who that is either, to be honest. Um, something about her seems different this time, now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy. She looks so sad. She's the MILF of this game, because there's only her. I don't think there's any other woman. <laughs> she looks up, besides, you know, the teenagers. She looks up half-heartedly, raises her glass to me before staring off into the middle distance. Um, what should I do? Yeah, really. Like, their, their relationship's kind of a mess, their whole marriage. Decide to go say hello. I walk over to the booth. She doesn't look up. Oh my god, I have to sneeze. The seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take my seat anyway, and she finally notices me. And again, I can't judge. Not my relationship. Hey, cowboy. But every reaction I've seen from between the two hasn't been very positive. Never better. She hiccups. Guess she's a little far gone. Oh. Tears stop, start welling up in her eyes. Oh. oh. I... Will you walk a gal home? Oh god. Let's call her a cab because it's raining. Oh god. What if she wants to talk though? Walking her home would be better. Oh. Both. Both good things. She has to be walked home though. Not driven. Side out of the booth. Seems like Mary's having some trouble getting up. I reach out to hand out a hand to help her but she waves me away I don't like Joseph period he scared me in this game but I love Mary I, I'm hearing that a lot from other people is that yeah. Joseph has like a really weird backstory or like he's freaky and I haven't got there yet <laughs> but I have a feeling that you guys are telling the truth something's uh, off about Joseph she clearly does not got it oh god yeah. maybe we should have uh, taken a cab you know what? Hang out here for a second. Walk over to the bartender and pay Mary's tab. Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I live in Mary's cul-de-sac and I'm just making sure she gets home safe tonight. He's creepy, but I'm gonna steal his wife in blue sweater. Right? Don't mind the house, too. Yeah, it's nothing weird, just... She usually has one of the bar staff walk her home, but I trust you. Good job, Neil. I've only met you once before. She doesn't, like, go home with... I don't really want to say it. Oh god. One of the guys she meets? Nah. Nah? She doesn't actually cheat. Ain't her thing. Thank god. Maybe they're just not happy in their marriage. Maybe that's why they're just so dysfunctional. I head back to the booth. Mary shambles out of her seat and directly into my arms. Or she could have her own reasons why she drinks a lot. I mean, addiction is addiction, right? It's uh, still raining a little bit. I should have took a cab. I take off my coat and hold it over Mary's head. Such a gentleman. Let's get you home. Mary and I walk in silence up to the street towards the cul-de-sac. I have no idea what to say to her for fear that she might hit me. <laughs> hit on me? Okay. <laughs> hit me. Or not. What did the bartender mean by it ain't her thing? <gasps> what does that mean? Sorry you have to see me like this. I'm usually not. I know Joseph doesn't like it when I... Just sorry. Also, it's really nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's so sweet for you to say. Thank you. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to. Res I'm not very good at taking compliments, but I do really appreciate that. Um, sorry, you have to see me like this. I'm usually not. I don't know. Um, does it? Uh, sorry, doesn't like it when I just. Sorry. It's all right. Mm. I'm a little flustered. I'm sorry if it, if I'm ever mean to you. It's alright. No, it's not. I know it's not. I'm just having a really... Forget it. Oh, Mary. She's struggling. It's alright. I'm not good at taking compliments either. We feel it, yeah. You know what I'm on about. As we get to the cul-de-sac, I can feel Mary starting to slow down. By the time we arrive at the doorstep, she pulls away from me. Wait. Can we just hold on? What's wrong? Is she gonna have a heart to heart? Heart to heart? Hey. How about another drink? Old time sick. Ooh, come on, Mary. It's bedtime. Mary looks me up and down, giving me a half smile. Hey, you're right. She pulls me. Oh God. She pulls me in close for a hug, holding onto me a little longer than feels appropriate. She mumbles into my chest. Hey, you're a good kid. Thanks for the company. Huh? Mary gives me a pat, pat on the back, straightens out her strutter, and walks the rest of the way to the front door herself. Huh. Maybe she's just like 
on Orthodox a little. I judge too harshly. I judge too quickly. Oh, I'm so tempted just to see what's going on with Joseph now, because... <sighs> Marry my beloved. Yeah. I judge too quickly. Oh, Robert's not- he just completely ghosted me. Matt- my date with Matt didn't go too hot. I don't think Hugo's went either. What about Brian? I kinda just wanna- Okay, I'm super curious. I'm just gonna- one more date. Date. It's okay to cry if you're feeling sad. Dad, tip number 69. Don't eat too close to your bedtime. That's also a good tip. I wish we could date her in the game. Yeah, why not? Let's make uh, multiple different types of endings for this. It's been a long day of crippling coupons. Looks like there's a sale on box brownie mix. Mm -hmm. Reminds me. I wonder if Joseph's up too. Yeah. I would love to see that. Like a game like this, but like women or just like a mix. So it's like non-binary or whatever people want. I think that would be interesting too. Cause there's not a lot of that stuff available. Or if he wants to go to the store with me and use these coupons, looks like he's online. Hey Joseph, wanna hang? Dream wife. Dream wife! <laughs> dream daddy. Well, dream date. Dream date. I like that one. Cause it kind of like, is still the, the D in the D. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me hope you finally recovered from your brownie induced coma. And I know I promised you a fun hang. But tonight I'm actually chaperoning a youth group mixer. Amanda is invited, invited, of course. If you're not doing anything, you should come. Oh god. Youth group mixer. And be a chaperone with me, because I need the help. I think for a moment, I'm a little bummed out, of course. I suppose I just wanted some me and Joseph time. Maybe I, maybe to get to know him a little better? Oh, what the heck. My friend needs my help. I type back. Buddy, if you need me, to, you got me. Just tell me where I need to be tonight. Joseph lets me know the details. It starts pretty soon. I should get ready. Dream daddy, dream date. I love that. I, they should make a, a sequel like that. I knock on Amanda's door and peek in. We're going to a youth group mixer. You can invite her. Where are you off to? I'm gonna go extreme couponing. I'm actually gonna go chaperone this youth mixer dancing that's happening at Joseph's church. He says you're invited, but if you don't want to, I'll come. Uh, want to come? I'll cover it for you. She's couponing. Oh, she's down. Maybe I'll make some new friends. She's so just such a good attitude. They need to make a dating game about sir. <laughs> Inky <laughs> Inky's on their clown arc. Um, what a good attitude. But I'll have you know that I'm mostly doing this for the potential of free food. Same. I would also. Thank you, Amanda. You get four daughter points today. <laughs> Can I trade them in for a daughter lava lamp? A daughter lava lamp? You have one in your room. You want two? I, I guess. Sorry, I only, uh, only have enough for a daughter spider ring. Or some of those daughter plastic jumpy frogs. Okay, those frogs are fun though. I like those things. They try their hardest. It's inspirational. Hmm. Jesus. <laughs> the sign. <laughs> Jesus is coming. <laughs> but it's spelt wrong. <laughs> um, We arrive at the church to find that nobody's there. They're all decorations and balloons and banners and everything, but no use. Mm -hmm. hmm? I've been to a couple dances in my life, and not that I want to paint myself as some sort of dance expert, but generally dances require people. <laughs> and those people need to be dancing. All of a sudden, Joseph jogs up to us. He looks frazzled. What happened? I need your help. Joseph gestures to the hand-painted bander hanging above the church doors. It says, Jesus is coming. What? Yikes. Hey. That's certainly a thing. God made all things, Amanda. Please don't say. Except for that banner. Ernest made that. Oh, of course he did. I generally can't tell if he meant that maliciously or if he just can't spell good. <laughs> you know what Gauls also does? Forgiveness. He forgives teenagers and he never ever breaks their box mods. Are you gonna break Ernest's box mod? I don't even know what that is, man. I wonder if they'll have a clown at this stance. <laughs> no, Amanda, that would be a sin. 
I think it's the one right after Sloth. Huh? I have no idea what they're talking about. Lemmy, I need your help getting this down before anyone sees it. I can swing that, Amanda. Can you help? Hmm. Physical labor, huh? Hmm. hmm. Huh? She's been uh, rapidly scanning the most uh, mostly empty room, looking for an escape route of her own. <laughs> I have to go set up the food. Food's already set up. Hmm. I'm gonna go do a final inspection pass on the food to make sure it's up to code. Hmm. I'm gonna go eat your food. Yeah. Amanda's able to bolt away before uh, myself or Joseph can get another wor word in. Hmm. Well, I'm stuttering all over the place. Uh, clowns are a sin. Well, <laughs> I duck you too. <laughs> Technically, God made all things, is what Joseph would say. <laughs> Including clowns. Well, uh, she can really book it when she wants to. Her father was a giant pair of legs. What? <laughs> I dated some giant arms once, but it turned out they were all right. You must have been devastated. Oh. It was an Armageddon. Mm. Oh god, that hurt. But he said a clown's a sin? I think he said the sign's a sin. <laughs> He's not right, yeah. I agree. There's something not right about Joseph, though, too. Just agree that everything he says is wrong. So it's... I get it. I'll workshop it. There's a gem in there somewhere. I think there is. That's a really dad joke. Really glad you're here, Lemmy. Are you enjoying my company, or did you just lure me out here for my strong arms and height advantage? I don't think you're taller than him, Lemmy. A little of both. It's already something with you, Joseph. Yeah. Something handsome and pious? You're not that pious. Huh. Debatable. You just alluded to breaking a child's vape pen. That's what he's talking about. Okay. <laughs> I would have lost the debate. It's oh. not even supposed to have that. You ready to be uh, to do this? Let's make some magic happen. Just get a ladder, man. Magic isn't real, Lemmy. God said that. <laughs> okay. God also made a bush one time. Oh. True. Joseph and I grab a step ladder and walk over to Ernest's banner. Oh. That turd Ernest has one final trick up his sleeve. Looks like this nightmare is stapled and taped six ways from Sunday. Any ideas? What happened to your strong arms and height advantage? Oh, right, I forgot about those. But I realize my oversized dad fingers are too far too large to get the leverage on the tiny tiny staples. Just use a staple puller. You got a hammer I can use to pry these off? Hmm. Let me. This is a church. We have a little nervous. Uh, we get a little nervous around here. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and nails. I'm kidding, we just don't have a hammer. Well, that's a good joke, I love that. But we have to hurry, the youths will be here any moment. I hate how they call them, just youths. I, um, I'll never hear the end of it if we don't fix this. Wait, I have an idea. I run to grab the marker that Ernest used uh, to draw this thing and jump back on the ladder. Is he gonna turn the U to an O? We can't get it down, but we can send a different message. I only got one shot here, let's do this right. Oh, this one's probably the best one. He is not cumin. He isn't <laughs> common. I'm able to turn the U into an A and an L somehow. It's a little tight, but it works. Well, that's true, I guess. Bask in his calming presence. Joseph, relax. Crisis averted. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. Joseph checks his watch. If I was Ernest, I would have took a picture of it first. Knowing that it would probably get changed after. Hmm, the DJ should be here by now. Oh, great. <laughs> Just then the door swing open and a man struts in with his day DJing equipment. <laughs> Joseph likes us, ew. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you're usually... Wait, you're not the guy. What happened to Evan? Evan knew exactly what to play. The Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm not Evan. Evan sold all his DJ equipment to backpack through Europe, so I'm filling in for him. Hey. You know what? My date with Joseph didn't go so well in the first place. Um, my original one. So I don't think we've gained enough points, even if he gets a positive response during this one. I think Craig and Damien are still in the lead. I do envy him, though. What would I give to drop everything and start over? Haha. <laughs> are you alright? 
Spin Master Quinn. I'm better than Alright, I'm DJ Ma Spin Master Quinn. I think he's like a 20 something. Late 20, maybe early 30. He's just panicking. Sad for his life. Sighs heavily. I usually do trivia nights, but I'm moonlighting. But I moonlight on the ones and twos to give myself a sense of purpose in life. Yep, it's definitely this existential crisis here. <laughs> I love that little dancing emoji. <laughs> it's time to party. Yeah. Let's get this thing bopping. Well, you'll have to do. You have a playlist of fun songs that youth will like that won't inspire impure thoughts or tempt them into the dark side, right? Oh god. The DJ thinks for a moment. <laughs> Believe me, buddy, I got what you need. Yeah. Just grinding music, the whole thing. I'll let you set it up. Yeah. Dance, 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 dance. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. <laughs> little clown ones oh my god he sounded like he was going to play uh, creep by radiohead on repeat i'm a creep after some time um the kids from the community start filling into the dance hall some of them seem to notice our sign hack but they don't seem to care what were they expecting them to stand around and point up and laugh i mean kids have their own agenda um, most of the kids group off into tiny clusters, standing in circles, casting sideways glances at the other groups of teens. Ah, uh, yes, the awkward, awkward phase of not wanting to go near the people of their interest. Um, man, I did not miss being a teenager at social functions. Really, that was, ugh, getting, like, horrible nostalgia. Everyone in the room turns their attention to the DJ. Coming at you with the sound that people want. We're off to a good start, I hope. Party time. Nick, this next tune goes out to all the ladies in the audience. Ladies, let me hear you say yeah. A few half-hearted yes echo through the crowd. God, God, you gotta get people already dancing before you start trying to, like, you know, do back and forth with the crowd. Party, party. Size again. I am. Man, it's been a heavy couple days. This one's actually just for my wife, Sandra. I hope we can work this out to my little honeysuckle vine. Oh. Yep, creep. it's creep by Radiohead. Uh, Amanda sidles up to me, pizza in one hand, punch in the other. Creep, huh? Bold choice for a youth group. Let's see where he goes with this. After the song finishes, he plays creep again. Is the DJ crying? Oh god. If you watch the kids really closely, you can catch them cringe every time Tom York swears. There they go. Oh god. Is this gonna go downhill? Maybe we should do something about this. Joseph runs up. Am I gonna DJ this party? Runs up to us. Uh, he's killing the vibe. They're listening to swears. Bad, sad swears. Ugh. We have to do something. You guys should try to give him a pep talk. Maybe work him up uh, to Everybody Hurts by Rem. Or at the very least, No Rain by Blind Melon. You wanna help us cheer him up? I want Amanda to DJ, I think. Uh, actually, I just saw my friend, uh, Fred, Frederick, Fred, Frederico, Frederico, he's from Latin. Oh god, that hurt to say. <laughs> I didn't know you were taking a Latin class. Huh? No, I'm, I'm not. Mm. So he's from a, a country Latin? Ugh. Yes, it ex exists. Don't Google it. You can go, Amanda, it's fine. And she's gone. Joseph and I make our way to the DJ booth where Spin Master Quinn is having a quiet cry. Oh, poor Quinn. It's okay, man. Hey buddy, hey my dudes. How's the party jamming? Hmm. It's uh, not? I'm sorry fellows, I'm just taking a moment to find my groove. Hey. Gotta play these sad tunes, properly appreciate the bangers, right? Oh god. <laughs> play the booty bumpers, it's what Jesus would have wanted. That's what I want. That's not how GC even works. Oh god, none of these are really good options. Oh god, none of these are good options. You know what, I don't care how Joseph feels about me. Listen buddy, this is a church function. The songs this, uh, you're playing seem, they're a bit much, don't you think? It's kind of bringing everyone down. You should put some on some top 40 stuff, lift everyone's spirits. When everyone's dancing and happy, that it uh makes the good lord happy. Oh god. <laughs> right, Joseph? <laughs> Good Lord does love a song that slaps. And he's a minister, so you know he means it. Let Jesus take the wheel here. 
Uh, you want me to play Jesus Take the Wheel? Is that an actual song? Is that the- that is the opposite of what I want you to do. Oh my god. Mm. Hey, uh, buddy. If it's problems you're having with, uh, right. Joseph Lee, then close to me. Yeah. What was his wife's name again? Sandra. Sandra. Sandra? Sandra. Yeah. Oh god, he likes me. If you're having problems with Sandra, I can help you too. I do counseling. It's my job here and I'm very good at it. I don't know. I can tell you're hurting. Nobody voluntarily listens to that much Radiohead. Hey, on repeat, unless you're going, really going through some tough times. Trust me, I know. He does have a tattoo. Joseph places a hand on Spin Master Quinn's shoulder, who immediately claps into Joseph's embrace, crying mm -hmm. quietly. There, there, bud. It's gonna be okay. This party has turned into a cry fest. Thank you. I'll, I'll put on some dance hall anthems. You're the best, Spin Master Quinn. Yet with another crisis averted, Joseph and I return to the dance floor where Amanda's waiting with an ice cream cone. How much food is at the table? You have ice cream here. Good work, Amanda. How is it going out there? Well, for a dance, there's a whole lot of dancing. There's not a whole lot of dancing. Looks like people are starting to bail, though. Yeah. It's a disaster. Don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, it's this ice cream, top notch. Mm. I'm sorry for dragging you into this lemmy. You and Amanda should just go home. I'm not gonna make you stay here to, uh, for the train wreck. It's not a disaster. We can fix this. We can suddenly realize what we have to do. Amanda, get out of here. What? I don't think you're gonna wanna be here for this or be seen with me after this. Oh no, is he gonna do an embarrassing dad dance in the middle of the floor? You're not going to. Throw my car keys to Amanda. I'll get a ride back with Joseph. Just remember me as I am right now, not as <laughs> what I'm about to become. Hi, Bakes! Nice to see you. How are you doing? Hmm. Nice knowing you, pups. Oops, she runs out the door. Joseph, I'm gonna turn it up on the dance floor. With luck, we can get these youths into it as well. Oh god, are you in or out? I don't know if it's actually really encouraging to see adults just like mess about on the dance floor because it's just. I remember being that age. Just woke up. Nice. Me? I'm doing great. I'm playing a game with dads and I have some energy so I'm not as tired and I'm having a good time chatting with chat. So I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> uh, see you on the other side. See you on the other side. Oh god. It's like they're walking into battle. I walk out to the dance floor in the middle of the room. The youths all stare at us, unsure of what we do. Wait, aren't your time zone like ahead of mine? Isn't your time zone like <laughs> I mean, whatever. You do what you want with your sleep schedule, as long as you're sleeping. That's the important part. I slept 14 hours and I'm still tired. Maybe I need to energy drink. Oh my god, 14 hours. Over oversleep is like a thing too, right? Um, but it seemed like your body needed it. It's important to get that. Let's start off easy and work our way up to more technical stuff. Oh god. The worm. I immediately drop to the floor and immediately regret it. I'm gonna be feeling this for weeks. Wow, I'm definitely not as good at this as I was in college. After a few a week full body undulations, I get back to my feet. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but too much too fast. Aw. You're covered in dirt now. Look around at all these semi disgusted youths. Maybe that's oh, that was the wrong move. I think so. Let's turn up the heat. Oh god. None of these are good. Running man. Since time and this move has never let me down, I start dragging in place, matching the movements with my arms, pushing out. This seems to awaken something in Joseph, who feels the fire of or the running man deep within him. I look around to the use. They're getting into it. Because the running man made a, a comeback, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, nice work, but we'd better pick it up or they'll lose interest quick. Oh god. Pat Tavistry is what, like... I don't know. Hammer slide? I don't know what that is. I hate Joseph with a passion. A fiery passion. Too bad there's no hammers and nails around. <laughs> I, I try to do the hammer slide. Honestly, it's not a bad bit, but the kids don't get into it. I don't think the pen um, flashed a little too long ago. Uh oh. He doesn't like me. That's good though. They're not looking too lively yet, but we can still turn it around. Oh god. What's butter turn? Oh god, that would be awful. Moonwalk. 
start sliding my feet backwards. I can't tell if this looks good or not, but I think these kids have seen enough people doing moonwalks that they understand the general concept. Uh, uh. Definitely, the moonwalk and like Running Man made a big comeback. <laughs> Joseph makes a moonwalk attempt. Surprisingly, dude pulls it off flawlessly. <laughs> I look around the youths. They're cheering. All right. Team Craig, I know, right? It's like Craig and Damien, because like Damien, he romanced the hell out of me earlier, so. <laughs> Unrehearsed backflip. That, I would just fall. Lift Joseph up. Nope. Death drop? Yes. I've seen enough internet videos of this move where I think I can nail it. On the beat drop, I click, kick my leg up and dramatically fall to the floor, my back landing on the ground with a shabam. All the kids immediately start screaming, they know what's up. Oh god. <laughs> I'm so sad it's not, like, drawn or animated. But at what cost? I will feel this for weeks to come. My chiropractor is gonna be pissed. Ooh, probably. What was that? The future of dance. It truly is. What? Obligingly. Somewhat obligingly. The kids take the dance floor and start to move around. Before long, they start to laugh and enjoy themselves. It was dicey, but we've done our jobs! The party has been saved. Come on, the rest of the chaperones will take it from here. What? I have something to show you. Oh god, is it gonna show me like a bin of bodies? This is dark. Um, leading me out of the main room and down various darkened corridors of the church? I can barely see anything and find myself tripping over my own feet. This is where it gets creepy. The future of dance. I mean, like, that did kick off like a big movement. I think the states have a lot of dancing in it. Or, like, inspired dancing on social media. Joseph, I think I lost you. His hand finds mine in the darkness. I'm right here. Watch it not be Joseph. And he's like in front of me and someone else is holding my hand. This is where he kills me though. So, um, I'm glad I can't see my blush. We keep walking. <laughs> where, where are we? <laughs> I know I'm scared. This church is huge. Why doesn't it have any lights? We're almost there. I actually have to admit that I was a little dishonest with you. I didn't just invite you out here to help me chaperone. Oh my god, he is gonna kill me. What's happening to the line being one of the ten things you're not supposed to do? I think there's an exception when you're trying to surprise a friend. Yeah, man. Like, at least use a flashlight on your phone or something. Right. Lemmy doesn't know how to do that, but Joseph could. Joseph closes a door behind us. I guess we're in a rent. There's like a third person just holding his hand. <laughs> I guess we're in a random room in the depths of his church now. What could he possibly have planned? So last time we talked about escaping to an island where we could live out an easy tropical lifestyle where our only worry is trying to find that lost shaker of salt. Since we can actually do that, I figured I could bring a little bit of tropics to Maple Bay. It's not quite Mar Margaritaville, but something like it. Joseph throws on the lights. Ooh. Welcome. This is office, oh my god. To Margarita Zone. Look around my eyes adjust to the light. It's his office, but I know. I I'm just taking in his room right now. The nautical stuff and like the cross. <laughs> um, there are twinkle lights strung across the walls, little garlands of fake flowers, and two beach chairs set up on the front of the desk. There's a blender and two glasses sitting on the table. Ukulele m music plays softly in the background. I mean, he's dedicated. Like, give him that. But, like, romance your wife, man. Oh, this Right? This is amazing. Wink. There's no pop tops to step on here, buddy. You did this for me? Joseph takes a seat and gestures for me to do the same. Uh -huh. You did this for us. I think we both earned it. I settle in while Joseph pours us mark. Guess, like, imagine if I hadn't accepted his invitation to chaperone. Oh, it would have been so sad. He would have been sitting here all alone. You really went all out? Whoa. I have a flair for the dramatic, and you can't re uh, you can't lead the community if you don't know how to make a good mar margarita. I take a sip of mine. This is a killer margarita. I would follow this man. <laughs> Do you think the dance is going to go okay without our sick dance moves? Oh. No, not here. You're missing the point of Margarita Zone. Oh. Margarita Zone is a place of rest and re relaxation. It's a place where you can kick up your feet and forget about your worries for a while. Watch out for blown out flip flops. Let's get tattoos and like <laughs> cuties. It's heaven on earth when an onion slice. The kid me wants Joseph, but I'm like, no, no, he's stranger danger. <laughs> you know what? 
I, I want to hear more of his story and why he creeps people out. It's so tempting. Watch out, blow up, flip I don't, none of these are good choices. Onion slice doesn't make sense. I've never had onion put in my margarita. If only I've got my uh, stick and poke kit in my desk. I was kidding. I'm also kidding. Oh god. This scared me. I actually do have a stick and poke kit in my desk, confiscated it from Ernest. You might like it. Oh god. Joseph gestures to the makeshift island bar he's made. I might. You never know. <laughs> you know, it's funny. This reminds me so much of when I was younger. I've been, I've been meaning to ask, what did you do before you started preaching? This is it, guys. It's uninteresting. I left home young and got into load a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? Trouble meant I got to go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I hitchhiked around the country, went on adventures, met all kinds of people. Did some stuff I'm not too proud of. <sighs> the backstory is good. Just Joseph in general is just creepy. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. His kids are also psychotic. But I was young and in love and I didn't have, an have to answer to anybody. And now... I was fundraiser car washes and take the kids to soccer practice on the weekends. Being a good dad is nothing to be ashamed of, Joseph. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to get heavy here. It's okay. It seems like you spend a lot of time taking care of others, but not enough time taking care of yourself. Truer words have never been spoken. If you need to talk about it, I'm here for you. Lemon's just like an all-around okay dude. Might be an anxious mess, but he's super friendly. Joseph stares deeply into the blender filled with ice and margarita mix. Just puts his hand in. <laughs> My question is, why is he flirting with us? But his wife is there in the picture. Exactly! So, like, maybe it's not Mary that's, like, messing up the relationship. Maybe it's Joseph. But he's been playing innocent this whole time. Or maybe he is creepy. This is maybe... <sighs> what if I'm on the right path? I just... It's just... I think about Margaritaville a lot. I guess the concept of it, a place where I could just strum my six string while I wait for the shrimp to boil. Drink margaritas all the time, forget my worries. Yes, yes. Oh, that's an easy life. I had Margaritaville once. Is he regretting his whole, like, like career and stuff? But I think the closest I'm ever going to get back to is Margarita Zone, a short and equational reprieve from my daily life. Is that such a bad thing? This is pretty nice. It doesn't last forever. That's the rub. When you're in ma Margarita Zone, it's not like your problems have really gone away. You're just choosing to ignore them. Maybe you're looking at it the wrong way. Maybe Margarita Zone is actually better than Margaritaville because Margaritaville is an impossible ideal. Can't drink it, but I have to wait till June. That's pretty close, actually. I'm happy... I can never remember what the thing is when you wish someone a happy birthday before their birthday. I always end up saying happy pre-birthday, but it just sounds really wrong. <laughs> so, um, god damn it. No, I don't have it. Just take what I said and I imagine I said it right. <laughs> remember what Spin Master Quinn said, sometimes you have to play the sad tunes to appreciate the bangers. If stepping on a roof t uh, pop top is your biggest concern, how could you possibly appreciate the boiling shrimp? The margarita zone isn't landlocked to this office. I think it, it's about finding the little pieces of margarita zone throughout your day and taking joy in those moments. <laughs> Happy unbirthday. <laughs> Happy unbirthday. Oh yeah! Oh, I totally forgot about that scene. Or that phrase even. I haven't seen that movie in so long. Or the movies, I guess there's many variations. It doesn't have uh, to be anything big for me. I think it's being able to quietly do world. My mouth is word jumbles. I drink some st strong coffee in the morning to see my daughter smile, or preemptive is what most people around here say for early birthday, belated as for late. Yeah, belated for late, but I can't remember. Preemptive? That might be it. That might be the one I'm thinking of. Maybe that's why I say free. Maybe. I smile at Joseph. To spend some quality time with a good friend. Let me just get, got a basket full of good advice. Yeah. I can feel myself leaning closer to Joseph. Is it just me or is he leaning closer to- Oh my- I swear to god, if he kisses me- Joseph tenses up. He downs the rest of his margarita and hops up out of his chair. It's getting late. We should head back. God. 
Sure. Joseph and I make sure to the dance wraps up without incident before he takes me back to the cul-de-sac. I hop out of Joseph's car before he pulls into his own driveway. <laughs> Joseph! Joseph. Yes, that's how I was saying his name last time, too. Um, thanks for the help. Thank thanks again for Margarita Zone. <laughs> Maybe we'll go back there one day. If we do, it'll be, um, <laughs> it'll be my own damn fault. <sighs> I walk into the living room to find Amanda curled up under a blanket and groaning on the couch. What's happened? Hey, Panda, you feeling okay? <sighs> Dad, I have a tummy ache. Because she ate too much junk food. Yeah. Aww. Drank too deeply from the well of life and now I pay the price. Aww. And by well of life, I mean a big lukewarm punch bowl of seltzer and juice and sherbet. 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 Amanda slides to the floor with an elongated groan. They're so dramatic. I love it. Do you anything, kiddo? Time machine that goes back appro approximately two hours in the past so that I can warm myself of the fo folly of excuses. I'll pour you a glass of water. Thank you. Love you, Pops. How'd the dance go? Oh, I crushed it. Got the kids on the dance floor at the expense of my dignity. A fair trade. Also, everything hurts. <laughs> See you in the morning, kiddo. Night, Dad. He should call his chiropractor, I think. Joseph? Hi, Street! How are you doing, Street? What's up? Oh. Oh no, it's a good date. <laughs> Another dreary night and a listless, listless stroll through Maple Bay. I've really been bonding with the community at Jim and Kim's lately, so my strolls have been leading me there more and more often. No, I know, right? An A class. At least it was an S class. I've had S class for both uh, Craig and Damien, so still in the still in the running there. Peter, the man from the bank. Keith from down the street. Evelyn, who I saw at the deli that one time. The guy whose name I think is Carl, but are basically members of the family at this point. <laughs> In fact, I heard Neil, the surly bartender, mention that tonight is Keith's from down the street's birthday and that he'll have to get that little baby a little cake for his, little, his special little day. That's so cute. Ugh, my hair is everywhere. I think he was probably just being a dick, but I heard, uh, but I head into the bar anyway. The mere possibility of cake is strong enough to lure me in. They're both are very addicted to food. Him and his daughter. And he stepped inside just to see Neil washing a cake away with a crime scene outlined of pink icing on it. Oh, Neil. I guess it really was Keith from down the street's birthday and I missed it. Oh. I sit down and order a beer. Ah. I sit down at the bar and notice Mary from next door sitting in the corner of the room, drinking alone again. She must have a rough day. Oh. She seems so weary and so sad. She's been doing this more and more often lately. A pang of guilt shoots through me. Does she know? Is this because of me? Am I a homewrecker? Yes. That's... It's not gonna go anywhere if I don't. Decide to say hi. Walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. Is the seat taken? Is this the same thing? She finally noticed me. You... Okay, this is maybe not the best idea. Hey. Mm. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? It's a new one. Okay. Yes, it is, Benny. <laughs> See how you have arrived. Uh, fun with your new best friend, Joseph. Um, he's a great. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you too. Oh God, Joseph is the home wrecker. Uh, Mary, I'm not. I had never accused you of anything and cough. Um, and cough. 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 Whatever. Let me. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. Oh God, Mary, you need a new husband. Ugh. Yeah. If she's the one getting hurt, I'll feel bad for everything bad I've said about her. <laughs> You're a good friend, aren't you? Just a friend. Is there one he needs? Oh god. That's funny. Joseph usually likes his friends to at least have a spine. Come on. Oh. So is Mary single now? Almost. We can't be as all as blunt as you are, Mary. So you're an expert on my marriage now? Oh shit, this is the wrong the wrong route to go down. Let's not. Um, it doesn't take an expert to see that you two are miserable. I'm not trying to be an expert on your marriage. Uh I want the juice. Give me the give me the tea. 
<laughs> what does that make you? We are miserable a long time before you started poking into our business, buddy boy. Don't come around thinking you're some paragon of empathy just because you got involved where you weren't welcomed. A spine. Yeah, we're spilling so much tea right now. Mary takes a long sip of her drink. This was a mistake. I, I am literally poking at their marriage. You know you're not really his type. I'm surprised. Oh, she knows? Mary pays her tab and strides right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. Why did they have four children? Maybe this is like a thing they found out really, Welcome. or found out long ago. Yeah, so like Joseph set up that date thing at the church and they almost kissed, but they're married and Mary, and Mary is the one who's stressed out and upset. But she knows about this. Knows about Joseph. Yeah, I don't like him. Screw Joseph. I, he has like four kids and is married. Like, dude. If you're not into it, cut it off. Don't just... That's rough. Especially for the kids. You say that like it's not totally obvious. Okay, well, like, this has turned many different ways. There's no telling. Ah, Craig. We've already, um, yes, just me, one more. We've already done Damien. You always say about third dates, so they get pretty serious. You might not have time to browse dad book for a while. Are you ready? Oh god. Yeah, right? Like, be good to yourselves. I think they're probably just, you know, staying together. I don't know why. But there is the four children. I mean, why still have so many kids if this is an issue? Maybe they found out after. I don't know. It's concerning. It's very concerning. Oh, what should I do? Should I go with Craig? It'll be a while. And then Damien will have to sit alone. But I guess I did have a Damien date the first. Maybe Mary ain't a bad bitch after all. That's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, maybe she's been the one that's wronged. Maybe she's been in love with Joseph this whole time. Had his children. Been happy and everything. And then Joseph has been like, I've never been in love with you. And... Oh god, now she's like falling apart. Like, man. Oh, I feel so bad. Okay, Craig, you ready? Try Craig, exactly. Maybe she nasty enough to turn a dude to the other team after four times. <laughs> just the four times. They didn't have sex other times in their marriage. Just the four. Um, it took some time for our schedules to line up. Um, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I can go camping. They'd be good Christians. <laughs> hey, once you're married, it's fair game. Um, he always stays so busy with work and the kids, but it's good to know that we'll just be able to spend some time relaxing together in nature. Mm -mm. Since our first run, I managed to go on regular runs with Craig. Actually, they quite encourage more sexual intercourse, like between married couples after they're married for the particular reason that they don't go like looking for it outward. They, there's different sections of like Christianity anyway. There's definitely ones that don't encourage that unless it's for baby making though. I'm not going to go into religion that's too deep of a hole. I've managed to do it on regular runs with Craig. I mostly do them because it seems like the only time we get to hang out. It's true he's really busy. But the added benefit is that we've seen a lot of improvement in my health. That is a great benefit. I can't stand running, like, outside, because I can't keep a rhythm. <laughs> so I end up, like, going really fast and then slowing down, and, uh, it's just, like, a mess. They had two sets of twins. Yeah, well, no, wait, it's the older, older kid, and then the twins, and then a, a toddler, right? I was able to sift through the addict. I still haven't seen the totter, do toddler. His name is Krish, I think. It's a really bad name. Um, through the attic, find my old camping gear from college. Craig put me in charge of bringing the sleeping bags and the tent while he takes care of the food. So I double check to make sure everything is ready to go. Craig should be here any minute. Mine is going to be spending the weekend on a school trip to our nation's capital. She hasn't been away from home without me for, for longer than a day since she was 14. That's quite a while. Okay. She's 18 now, what? I think. I hope she isn't feeling as nervous as about it as I am. Hey, Manda Panda. Man is in the middle of sitting on top of her law. <laughs> I've done this. Luggage in order to get it to finally zip. Mm. Um, hey, Pops. Ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. 
I also like Brian. He seems like the clown of the family, so I like him. Yeah, I like him too. I just don't like how my character reacts to him. Like, my character is annoying me rather than Brian. Brian's like, he's top notch. He's so friendly. He's so nice. And like a good sport too. Um, how much did you pack? You seem like, and he's always down for having fun. So I really like Brian too. Oh, it's um, it's all my camera equipment, lenses, tripod, flat, all that. Are you even gonna have time to take pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good. Oh right, I forgot. She's a photography major, or going into school for photography, university, college, whatever. I need to get a good shot for my series on national monuments. Your character name is just clown. <laughs> You know what? I'm not surprised, Inky. <laughs> you do you. I want to see what they look like, though. That'd be great. You know what's gonna happen. Hmm. Clowning around. It's one of those internet series where I am reimagine Disney princesses as founding fathers. I'm here for it. What? Hmm. Kitty. Nobody likes those. I'm just taking portraits of, portraits of my friends. Oh, well, I'm gonna be in the woods, out there in nature, you know, roughing it. Just me and Mother Nature, the old Madre de Tres. Yeah, I don't know what it is in Spanish either. Um, you're gonna be alright on your own? <laughs> Just clowning around. Hmm. I'm not gonna have any signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all. Oh, it's alright. I'll be able to survive a couple days without constant updates or um who I just got voted off of International Haunted House Hunters. I love the TV shows in this game. Like, I really want these to exist. Well, I'll miss you. And for the record, Bradley was pushed down a flight of ornate stairs by a ghost. They are really beautiful stairs. Mana fish uh, finishes sipping up a big suitcase and lugs it next to the door to her uh, upper bedroom. She turns around and gives me a big hug. Relax, Dadron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I could possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh well, alright. Don't steal anything, okay? Hmm. Since you asked nicely, fine. Promise. It's like the plan was to steal stuff. I step outside. He doesn't have the baby on him. Where's River? I step outside, hauling my bags behind me. Craig's already strapped some cami gear on top of the, my modest but stylish car. Yeah, he uses his car a lot. Um, he knows me uh, carrying my equipment and Hurdle hurries over to take it from me. Upton has been streaming for an hour and a half. Whoa. Oh my god, it's such a gentleman. I almost had a case of vapors there. What's that? Never fear, these muscles are made for picking up heavy things and putting them in their place. <gasps> okay. <laughs> has been following me. Nice, you got an hour. <laughs> For almost an hour. Um, never fear, these muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in their place. I still can't get over that he said that. Craig, my boy, I know, those one-liners. Hopefully they can get more on a romantic upturn. <laughs> I guess I can't argue with that. Everything good with Amanda? Yep, on her way to a school field trip uh, to Washington, D.C. Seven days? You got a whole week, damn. Oh. Already oh right, it was last week. Already at Smashley's for the weekend. Smashley was his ex wife, the one he had kids with. They also the girl that he was dating in college, who her name is actually Ashley, but her nickname is Smashley, which she still goes by. Yes, I'm ready to go to camp on. One week anniversary. What shall we do for our anniversary, Lauren? I load the rest of my stuff up into Carrie's car and we get in. Oh no. What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. <laughs> your juicer? Someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just... I... He was worried about leaving his kids. Let the juicer float away. Take all your worries and blend them into pulpy good vi vibes. Coffee date? Coffee date sounds great. Take it to go. Hey, street. We have anything to listen to? Pulpy good vibes. Uh, all I had at my place is a series of CDs that guide you through a thorough, thorough and intense calisthenic workout. Do you want to listen to those? Hold up. What's up, Benny? Um, 
I was getting ready for the gym and heard juice and came running. <laughs> you are the juice man. Um, um, Craig left his uh, blender on at home. That's why he's worried about the juice. Take your pick. I thumbed through the page after page of kids sing along CDs. Oh god. Juice. Oh yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star takes me back. Cat Ste- no, it's not Cat Stevens. It's- there are CDs that I listened to as a kid that I'm super nostalgic at listening to. I want to remember what they're called. I get to the end uh, of the case to find, at the very last slot, a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it? Oh no, is it a mixtape? Tape? DJ Kegstan Mix, <laughs> mix Volume 1? It totally is. Make it just for the trip. I think you'll like it. I pop the CD into the car stereo and it's immediately transported back to our old dorm room. Hits after hit play. And soon enough, we're both happily screaming along. Scream singing this lyrics to each other as we fly down the highway. That's always fun. I love doing that. The song was Carl's favorite. Carl? The third roommate? Oh, they f I haven't heard about Carl at all. Juice. <laughs> My juice is water. Water juice. You brought that dog home one night and I couldn't pry you to- Oh, Carl's the dog? The third roommate? I get it. So we spent an entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange roommate who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog spark. Man, if I haven't heard the number of stories of college kids sneaking in small animals into the dorm rooms. There's so many. We'll have a room inspection. That RA was so suspicious of us, but could never prove anything. And Carl was just under the blanket. Bless that pup's courage under fire. Strong pup. My juice is pepper. <laughs> oh, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> you know the soda? I was like, you're drinking a whole thing of pepper? Someone has the strength of a f thousand suns, but I do not. Um, we did some dumb things back in college. But yeah, no, I've, I've got energy drink as well, so I'm not super, super duper healthy in that sense. Health juice is better than no juice. <laughs> uh, the hours fly by as we belt out our tunes in whatever non-existent keys or key our voices register in. So messily, basically. Soon enough, we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vis vistas? Of everything amazing that nature has to offer? Me drink pepper? <laughs> Why is it spicy? <laughs> Juice is full of sugar. Yeah, this especially. Uh, <laughs> just imagine someone being like, mm, What's so spicy? <laughs> so it's like drinking soda with a multivitamin. It's bad for your body and teeth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Benny. Okay, but like, I was super sleepy this morning. Needed some caffeine. The hours fly by as we belt out tunes. Oh, right, I already said that. But it's yummy going down. Exactly. And then it's down. Good enough. I don't drink it for the flavor. We park our car at the entrance of a familiar trail and load up our gear on our backs. I'm thankful that I've been working on my health over the last couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'd be dreading all the hiking that's about to happen. Oh, God. Craig looks intently at his phone. Everything alright? Are we gonna get lost? Yep, just had to fire off one last work email. Trees. It's just trees. Craig pockets the phone and we start off on the trail. It's revitarrelepnerrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Craig. Um, stop all the dudes being dads, weird stuff you got going on, and just go to the frogs. I'd be one with the frogs, man. I'm a relaxed boy. <laughs> That's my dude. He just basically called him a good boy. I can't. Um, we keep, uh, we keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. After a bit, he stops in his tracks. Maybe we should go back. We could find another campground that gets good cell phone reception. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instincts is kicking in and my mind keeps conjuring up all so sorts of worst case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? I don't have a signal. I would have no way of knowing. He is like a puppy, one big muscly puppy. <laughs> um, let me tell you that feeling never goes away no matter how old your kids are. You just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I have, uh, no, I give him a re reassuring punch on the shoulder. Oh, damn. Uh, try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from it all and just focus on ourselves for this little trip. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. Two dads being guys, being dudes. Craig looks me directly in the eyes. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. We're gonna have fun, some fun week this weekend. Craig and I get back to marching. It's not too long of a hike before we get to the campsite. We're both glad to see that we're the only people here. You know, they really should have a map if they don't have cell phone reception. It's getting a little weird, but I mean, this is the third date. <laughs> okay, <laughs> have fun in the gym, Benny. Like, don't get hurt. Can't believe uh, you still have this tent. Found in my attic and already checked it for holes. I've seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. Don't tell me how I'm not living my life. Okay, get hurt. <laughs> get wrecked, Benny. Go for it. Uh, uh, Craig is just a protective puppy. He wants to know if it's if his pups are okay. That's okay, and it's pretty sweet. It is really sweet. He's such a, uh, like, a family-oriented man now than he was in college. It's so nice to see. I dump the bag of fabric and poles onto the ground. We unfold the tent in a desired spot and hand Craig the stakes. <sighs> we still know how to do this, right? Nope. Of course we do. We do not. Never. If you ever try to put up a tent. After 20 minutes of struggling like people in a bad infomercial, we somehow managed to build an upright structure that closely resembles what a tent would look like. If you ask somebody to draw a picture of one with their eyes shut. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't put this up against the storm, but I think we'll be able to survive for the night. Oh, they're not even going to fix it. We set out a couple chairs and our cooking equipment, admiring our handiwork. Bro, look at us go. Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall griddle our meats and drink our brews. The juice. For we hold dominion over this land. Barely. And uh, look at our camping chairs. Which are we going to sit on? Does it matter? So what's next? The camping extravaganza docket? Two guys just having fun. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it is. Two guys being dudes and having fun being guys being dads. <laughs> Sitting six feet apart. Well, now that we have shelter settled, I think it's time for us to do- they're going to sleep in the same tent too. Um, to do some exploring. There's a waterfall a little bit up the way that I'm sure we could hike to. Let's go hiking! We venture into the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire the wildlife. Don't stay up there too late. It gets dark. Craig reaches out an arm and stops Dang. me. Dude, does that look like what I think it looks like? I look over to where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does! That tree looks like a butt! Hmm. Oh, oh, I was gonna ask what their obsessions were with butts. But literally, it's in the title, <laughs> so I can't get over how detailed it is. I examine the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has back dimples on my fucking <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry, my Discord is on work, but I can send you um, it if you want. I'm just editing it a bit. Um, I thought we were going to have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. Um, Craig holds back a snicker. I'll do that. I'll do that after my stream. Craig holds back- oh, I said that. <laughs> I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. I'm stickering now, too. <laughs> Let me in. 
Let us and I'll, oh my god. Uh, this tree further. Craig and I share a huge belly laugh at our awful jokes. The best thing about this is that there's no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. We high five. Craig and I hit the trail again. It's been a long time since we've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. We point out old landmarks that we remember from our college days. I think we're getting close now. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, we hear water running. Do we get to see it? Oh, nice. Cresting over a hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall spilling into a large body of water that runs into a river. Mouths agape with the genuine beauty of the place. We go to investigate. The old waterfall. It's gorgeous. Nature is so rad. Hearing further, we get an idea of how deep- are they gonna like skinny dip? <laughs> Think we can jump off of it like the old days? Ha. This old dad is happy here on dry land. Let's just go swimming. Looks like you can climb right up over here. We didn't even bring swim trunks. What are you talking about? Craig? <laughs> Guys, this is it. <laughs> this is the third date. Craig immediately brings taking off his clothes. Um. <laughs> um, there's no option here. Can't help but sneak a peek. That That is a good butt. Craig turns around suddenly, catches me looking. I do a lot of glute workouts. Thank you. Oh my god. I mainly turned away blushing. You coming or what? Yes. Uh, I don't know about this, dude. It's already making its way over to the waterfall by the time I finish my sentence. When he realizes I'm not right behind me, or around right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. We lived together for years and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. That's not exactly what I want to hear either, though. <sighs> let's put on a show. He needs pants anyway. Let's put on a show. Let's make it sexy. Um, oh god. <laughs> I can't. If the clothes are coming off, then it's someone's birthday. Craig gives me the... <laughs> Turn it on, give my booty a good spank. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> that one's for you, big boy. Oh, someone drowned me. I take off my shirt and drop it in a pile of Craig's clothes. I put the rest of my sh clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig and I climb up the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on the wet rocks. <laughs> I know, right? He reaches the peak before I do and offers me a hand getting up. Um, at the top, we look over the cliff in the tiny lake, into the tiny lake. It takes so much higher up from this perspective. I don't know if you guys should jump there if you don't have any, like, first aid kits or something. Imagine just hitting the rock and you're done. Um, Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulled some stunts in college that I am honestly still shocked he survived. I was always the one standing on the sidelines, watching and hoping I wouldn't be brought- I wouldn't be bringing him home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous. Craig looks me in the eye. Don't think, just jump. Craig cannonballs off the waterfall into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment, before he finally resurfaces from under the water. Ooh! He treads water and looks up at me. You coming or what? Don't think, just jump. How are you supposed to not think? I'm pretty sure this is not physically possible. My toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think, just... I run off the edge, trying to do my best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle it turns into a really graceful belly flop. I hit the water with a loud slap. Ow, shit. I resurface to find Craig giggling. Uh, I rate that belly flop a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place. I playfully splash water at Craig. Are you sure about that? Why does it feel like I'm reading like fan fiction or something? <laughs> I splash him again. You've given me no choice. Craig splashes me in the face with a huge wave of water. You've awakened the beast. Oh god. He launches another wave of water at me. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't put a wild animal in a corner. <laughs> Uh Oh, that one involves touching though. It is a game, yeah technically. Let's dunk him. I lunch for Craig and manage to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move. To summon all my dad's strength to lift Craig out of the water. Nice. Hey! <laughs> I drop him down for the splash, Craig bounces back out of the water. Nice. My turn. Oh god. Oh no, it seems like Craig was simply allowing me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples me with his clearly superior muscles and quite literally tosses me across the water. I emerge from the water devastated. You think I did all those pull-ups just so I could look good with my shirt off? 
Nah, bro, these arm cannons are dead launchers. <laughs> they still got the good jokes, though. Craig does a playful flex for me. This is getting... Craig, truce, please. Craig thinks about it. Mm. Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There's peace. Man, that jump was an adrenaline rush. Mm. That's so scary now, huh? Let's let's do it again. Race to the top. He likes that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we run all the way. I know. I like how they have like eggplants and the hearts and stuff. Um, we run all the way up uh, the slick rocks and cannonball off the waterfall again. What a rush. Good form in that one. Want to go again? You know it. We'll go back to the, the campsite next. With the same energy we had in our youth, we climb back up to the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm sure looks incredibly graceful as I play <laughs> belly flop into the water. Phew, man, this is fun. One more go in you. Uh, I wonder what will happen if I just keep going. Is someone going to get hurt? It takes us a little bit more time, but we get to the waterfall and both, of, uh, both do our best running jumps into the water below. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should be going back before it gets too dark. Uh, you're right. Mm -hmm. We should probably head back. We go put our clothes on. I notice they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash bite wasn't the best idea. Uh, it's okay. We'll get a fire going in time. We can dry off and get some winter dinner going. Uh, they're still in their underwear. <laughs> Sopping wet. We hike back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of steaks and some chopped potatoes and tin foil. Nice. Nice. He prepped. Meal prepped. Um, you ready for a feast? Hey, man. Take a seat. Craig train is pulling into the relaxation, <laughs> relaxation station, and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Mosquitoes must love him now, right? God, probably not the best when it's nighttime and the mosquitoes are out. But Craig cooks now. I remember how his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwave mac and cheese, but not microwaved, and have trouble believing that microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved. And I have trouble believing the thing he just said. Okay, so he just ate it on microwave. <laughs> Craig, put on a shirt, please. Oh. His nips are just out. <laughs> sure, let me grab my matches. Please put new clothes on. He rummages around in his bag, pulling out, uh, uh checking every pocket. Uh-oh. I don't know. I know I packed it. Checks another bag and still can't find it. My stomach grumbles and now I'm more acutely aware of how cold and wet I am. We really need to get the fire started. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. I don't know. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn I packed it. I'm sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. We can start a fire. We're smart guys. I mean, how hard could it be? I've watched plenty of survival p programs on TV. I, if a naked reality TV star can do it, so can we. It's actually really hard. We need some wood. We need dry wood. I don't know. There's no shortage of that. And some tinder. Oh. And I think we need some ancient aliens are then supposed to come by and give us advanced technology by renovating our house depending on the show. <laughs> Craig and I gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until we have all the materials that could conceptually make a passable looking campfire. Which one would be the best to use? It's actually rocks, but um, just add fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is now setting. A cool breeze rustling, rustles the leaves of the trees around us. We have to work quick. I've done this in the past and I know I can figure it out. Just give me a second. Any way I can help? <laughs> give me some moral support. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. Never knew a better Craig. Go overboard with compliments. In all my days, I can confidently say that I've never known a Craig to be a better friend, father, or fire maker. Oh, you liked it. Actually, now that I think about it, I knew a guy named Craig in high school who ended up getting a job as a professional pyrotechnics operator, as I suppose... And I suppose he must have been pretty good at starting fire, but I bet you're even better than that guy. Oh. Oh no. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss. Like, how do, How was I supposed to know he went? Right? This is, it, this is the third date, Lauren, so... But how was I supposed to know that he knew another guy named Craig in high school? He's just He opens his mouth and just things come out. Uh, able to get something going, he blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon we have enough of a little fire going. Got jealous of the other Craig. Exactly. It's like, why mention another guy? 
Uh, way to go. We're regular outdoorsy fellas. Oh. Yeah, that dialogue prompt wasn't super descriptive. They never are, really. He tries to fool you. Take a seat into the lawn chairs. Craig bought. Cozy up to the fire, warming up my hands. Oh. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. I watch it. Craig stokes the fire and sets up a makeshift make grill for the steaks. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the scent of steak filling the air, I actually feel pretty calm. Expertly sears two steaks in a pan. It's been heating over the fire, cracking thyme and crushed ginger over it while basting them both in butter. That's exactly how you do it. I can cook, it. I can cook a mean steak, so. Um, I didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest I ever saw um, him get in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packets onto dry ramen and eating it up straight. Okay, hey. Yeah, those are actually kind of good, though. Um, when did this happen? They haven't steak. Shh, let me join you guys. Exactly, right? Making me hungry. I used to eat cereal every morning with beer and... Please don't do this. Oh. Ugh. I grew up, I guess. I think these are just about ready. Only takes, like... It doesn't take very long. Craig puts the steaks on the paper plate and sets them aside. I start to reach for one, but Craig <laughs> smacks my hand away. Dude, let them rest. They'll be more flavorful that way. I patiently return to my seat, eyeing the steaks longingly from a distance. They smell incredibly. Let's put a shirt on, man. <laughs> Craig prepares a side salad for us in the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese into a freshly chopped greens. He places it next to the generously pile of roasted potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. He knows what he's doing. Once it's all ready, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Hmm. Everything tastes okay? I'm in heaven. Oh. Did his chest muscles just move? Or did his arm move? I don't know. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. Um, that's what I'd like to hear. Remember how for an uh, entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast? Lunch and dinner? Oh my god. My insides just hurt thinking about that. Oh. It's so hard to not go back to that. Is it? Is it really? Look at you now, man. You have kids, a great job, and now you cook like a vengeful wizard whose arc nemesis is microwavable food. I'm really impressed with how much you've gotten uh, your life together. Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. I'm glad you think that. God, why is he- this is gonna be a sad moment. I glance at Craig while he picks out his salad. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he has a sense of maturity he didn't have in college. He looks so exhausted. Oh, you okay? I don't know. Yeah. Come on, dude. I've known you for long enough to see when you're down. <gasps> oh. Oh no. This is Craig's backstory. I'm tired, bro. I've been out here, and think being out here is making me realize how drained I feel. You work really hard, Craig. It can't be easy. I don't know. I have to for my girls. I volunteer at their school, I cook healthy meals for them, I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. When they're with their mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. What a good dad. But it's burn it's burning him out. Looking grown up. I just dead died. And tired inside. Sounds about right. Yeah. That's adulthood for you though. I mean <laughs> And then you work out a lot, you can crush anyone who stands in their way. I don't know. That, and I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Look at him go. Go, little rock star. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like it's bleeding you dry. That's what it takes to raise a mild, and it's worth it. But not if you are also burnt out in the result of that, because they can see that. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from here, but you gotta take care of yourself too. I do though, I eat right and exercise, and that's not what I mean. You're too little butter on too much toast, you know? <laughs> what? You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you care this much about your kids, but you can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter too. Lammy again with the good oh. advice. Damn. It's just like, advice wizard. It's just... I know I can provide for my family, and if I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing right by them. Oh. But I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. It's like it's never enough for me. Every time I try to relax, that voice keeps telling me I don't deserve it. To be honest, 
I even feel guilty about being out here. Craig, you're trying your best, and you're doing an amazing job. That's a fact. But even if you weren't, you would still deserve happiness. Oh. Do I, though? Bro. <laughs> I picked the one with bro. They were the exact same. <laughs> I look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. He's compassionate, he's hardworking, he's relentlessly positive. He encourages everyone um, to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. Team Craig all the way down. If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Mm -hmm. Craig beams, gets up and walks over to his supplies. Oh. You gonna get a shirt out of there? Okay, <laughs> come on, I brought dessert. It's me. <laughs> oh, are you gonna use the campfire to torch the top of some creme brulee? Oh. What? I know a little to nothing about cooking. Craig pulls out marshmallows. Hey. That's what it's about. Well, you know how to make s'mores, right? I love s'mores. I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you used to just completely blacken the marshmallow. Oh. Some people like eating them like that. I don't, though. Oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside, but gooey center is preserved. Brutish. He throws a marshmallow at me and I catch it in my mouth. Mm -hmm move. We used to be able to do that at a great distance against the wind disadvantage. Give me a week of practice that I'll be competitive again. <laughs> Craig and I sit in the warm glow of a campfire, watching embers float up towards the sky. The stars are so much brighter out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I miss this, Lemmy. Me too. It's all touching. We stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. We watch as the fire dies and eventually clamber. Clamber. Clamber? Into the tent. Why does that sound weird? Or wrong? Clamber. We crawl- oh god. We clamber into the tent and I feel- unfurl- unfurl? My sleeping bag? Wait, where's the other sleeping bag? Oh god. I look around for the second- oh. Oh no. Oh no, I must have left it at home. It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry, I just- I'll curl up over here. No way, here. Oh god. Cracking the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for the both of us to lay on top of it night bro good night bro i roll over and we face away from each other without a blanket it's really cold oh this is like bed sharing trope i can't i shiver and without realizing it i find myself nestle nestling closer to craig i'm sure he won't mind he turns over and he, i can feel breath his breath on my neck it's hard to focus on anything else guys it's getting steamy in here i turn over trying to get more comfortable i open my eyes to find craig's face only a few inches from my own for once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open. His hand finds a place on my waist. Oh my god. I'm not sure who leads in first, but suddenly we're kissing. <laughs> okay. Ah. We look at each other again, my heart racing. Craig. Oh, man. I, get a strong, I got strong feelings for you, bro. Oh, feelings I can't deny anymore. Bro. Me too. Run my hands through his hair, then down his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping his arms around me. I feel so secure. You know, talking about old times is fun, but I like making new memories with you. <laughs> right? I smile, tracing the lines of his hip with my finger. We kiss again. I'm not worried about get us getting too cold tonight. Well, bam. Stay complete. Dead points. Dead points. Dead points. S class. Amazing. Nice. Just like back in college. Just like back in college. <sighs> that was intense. <laughs> Super great. <sighs> I think I have everything finally set up. I managed to be here any minute now. Back home. Everybody's safe. I don't know if he got late or not. Probably not. I think it's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool. Let me be cool. You won't be able to hide it from her at all. He walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start? Mm. Something fishy? Rats. No, you asked too many questions. Sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. What? <laughs> oh, God. What? No. Uh, uh, I had a crab cake sandwich for lunch. That's probably it. 
All I know is, uh, they kiss. That's all I know and care about. Yeah. They were cute, even if they just cuddled for warmth. Oh, it was the third date. Oh, uh, no, I forgot again. Uh, Dad. Oh gosh, I'm gonna be sick. What have I done? <sighs> I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Aww. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would be... It would be filled my heart with glee. Oh, there was an error. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present of... Where I present lies covered under a tablecloth. Oh, her present lies under a tablecloth. It's not even special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week. She graduated already? Oh. And I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you dramatic whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way. I figure you probably won't be able to get a uh, cable in the dorm, so I thought it would, might be nice to take a piece of home with you. DVD box set of Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Trackers. This is all 19 seasons? Damn. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghost features on the show. Ah. I mean, I'm not complaining. I love this. Thanks. Give me a big hug. Glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Yeah. Totally. Hey. Oh, God. What? Is it over? Did I finish? You to oh, maybe this is just an event. I don't know. Uh, you told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. We brought dilfs around so you can... <laughs> right? I wouldn't mind us being my graduation party. <laughs> um, everyone's here. I also got surprised. I didn't expect that at all. Um, yeah, well, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Oh, hello, Daddy. <laughs> sure is. Fully custom all down to the type of mac. You know what? Honestly, that would be great. There's an ice cream cake, uh, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. Ooh. Yeah. I haven't had ice cream cake in so long. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, just have good, have fun with your pals, all right? Did they bring all their kids and stuff? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. I still haven't seen Robert's children. For all we know is we he has children. Or maybe he just made that up, I don't know. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the round to make sure everybody's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Lemmy! Brian, you made it! Uh -huh. Ha! I don't pass a good Mac. <laughs> don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? Uh -huh. It's not bad. Bro, all the daddies, they look like they want you so bad. I know, I don't know what's so attractive about Lemmy because I really don't know what's so attractive about Lemmy. Like, look at this face. <laughs> I did him wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just not bad? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. <laughs> Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad? Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to play a, pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. It's alright. I don't know why they, they like a cr clown either. It's all these like really attractive um, dads in the same cul-de-sac basically like fawning over the random guy that moves in. It's a weird concept but I mean all two of them right? Looks like you've settled in to this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. What happened to your marriage Joseph? It's like every anime pretty much. <laughs> it's a harem. Um where I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you more at the church events. We got a big schedule planned for the rest of the years, and I'm sure the kids would love to see your dance move again. Sure thing, Joseph. Hmm. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime? Oh god. Joseph, that'd be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Oh. Perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work. Lemme. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money would re will really help. 
Do you see her just flash by the screen? Amanda walks by, pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey. Joseph is still flirty, I see you. Go to your wife, you shrimp. Yeah, basically. God. He he's the bad the bad seed in that relationship. He just fooled all of us with his his church going ways. And you know, sweater vests and stuff. <laughs> Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Uh huh, yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. You're right. Go for it, Thoughtle. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm gonna break anything I want and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Yeah. Nope. Oh. And I still have to- you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... He fooled young me with his looks, but it won't happen again. <laughs> hey Robert, glad you could make it. Yep. He's so disinterested. It's... Robert takes a sip of his drink. Why is it being so cold to me? Is everything okay? Sure. Why won't you talk to me? I thought we had something. Come on, let me. you know what this was. I... You were an object to me the same way I thought I was an object to you. I figured we were on the same page here. At least that's how you were acting. But I don't want to be in this if there were feelings involved. I got too much to deal with as is. I'll catch you around. Right? Wow, what? He just blew me off. Blew me off. Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. <laughs> I'll have a fresh batch of right said banana bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Is she like the oldest daughter out of all the dads? But then again, uh, Lucian might also have graduated. My deepest thanks to extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Now I feel bad for not dating Damien. <sighs> he liked Lemmy so much. Thanks for coming by. Looks like Amanda's hanging out with Briar and Hazel. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, Briar, think of a shape. Hazel, what's she thinking of? Square. Briar? Star. <laughs> we'll get it next time. Amanda leans in close to Briar and Hazel, lowering her voice. Listen, you guys can be real with me. If you're down if you're downplaying your second abilities, I want you to know that you can trust me. Heck, even think of me as your third twin. Amanda, that's a triplet. Hmm. You know, Dad. By the time I was done with these kids, you're gonna be finishing each other's What? <laughs> You didn't finish your sentence. <laughs> what are we gonna be finishing each other's yeah. sentences? See, third twin. Yeah. I have to go. Oh, this is pretty. This is his backyard. Damn. He had a cherry blossom tree in the backyard with a little pond. I'd like hang up, hung up fairy lights. Man, how did he afford this house? <laughs> As the party starts to wind down, I get a seat next to Craig. The sun is setting, and everyone seems to have eaten their fill, bro. Bro. <laughs> this reminds me of the parties we used to throw. Fewer cake stands, of course. Probably for the best. I don't want to get my hip replaced after a party trick goes wrong. Craig is the dreamiest daddy. He. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Team Craig. Oh. Craig sighs. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. I'm alright. I just can't hang for too long. I'm gonna be back home and answer some emails. What happened to relaxing? I am relaxing right now. We're sitting on a bench. Oh. Yeah, well, I could be standing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a hard pick. I'd have to pick those two for, like, top. Craig is my number one. You want to take better care of yourself? I care about you, and I want you to be okay. Oh. I appreciate it. But I'm fine. You're a good friend, dude. Good friend. Do you, do you ever wish that maybe we were more than that? Mm -hmm. Oh, bro. Oh. Uh, sorry I gave you- Oh no! <laughs> gave off that impression. Uh, to be honest, I kind of wondered the same thing. But, nice. I don't have time for that right now. No! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you just rejected it. And after all the kissing we did in the tent, <laughs> I think we're just better off friends. What a sly fucking move. I am mad. <laughs> yeah. What the hell, Craig? <laughs> Maybe if I didn't, I had like an answer where I was complimenting him for doing the fire thing and he got like a negative point. Maybe my points aren't up enough. 
for it to like have a positive ending or something. Oh. All right, buddy. Gotta get moving. Thanks for inviting me. God damn it. Grabbed your waist and everything. Perky bitch. Pretty much. Oh my god. Leading me on. I mean, like, what was that whole campy trip? Not sending signals that this was gonna happen. Right? Well, throw some hands. I'll throw hands with you. We can throw hands together. Man. Last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Did I miss my chance with all of the dads then? Killer heart party pops. What can I say? I was inspired. Hey, I'm gonna touch you. Touch and kiss you, but I'm not into you. Yeah, exactly. What a mess. I thought Craig was different. He's not. I have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy. But it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Oh, Dad, you've been there for me through everything. That's There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you. But I realize that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I, we stand, Amanda. This is... Ugh. She's such a good daughter. And they both have like really good advice for some reason. <laughs> I can be who I am today without you. Amanda's best girl. By far. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to god. Let me just cry again. You're the best dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny rat package. She is. She's the best daughter. Taylor wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda? It's... it's us. Kind of shocking all of our photo albums were just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed to at least get one together before I leave. That's true. Um, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. Ugh. Um, you're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Always do. What is so- what- why is this so touching? <laughs> Why don't I share a hug? This is the only- uh, this is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Ugh. Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff. In intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Wave a goodbye to the party goers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon. I do love this garden like hell. Um, I'm glad I made you made some friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that maybe not what you were looking for, but those people care about you. I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. I'm gonna be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story. And I would be nervous about it, but I I know that you're always gonna be looking out for me the same way I'll always be looking out for you. Hmm. Team Sour? Team Sour. Is it over? Oh, it's over, guys! I got no one! <laughs> I failed! How did I lose at a dating game? <laughs> God damn it, Craig. We were bros, we had history. How could you do this to me? Did me dirty. Just like me in real life. Oh, uh, street won't be forever. Character art. But this is forever. Lemmy's now gone. I'm so upset you ended up lonely, right? And then Amanda's going to college. Nobody's gonna be home with him. I think you can still try to get the dad's kit. Can you? Does there like an ending? Oh. Holding it makes it go really fast. That's nice. I just wanted to go back. See if it actually. Ooh, don't look. Oh, that's the picture! You're the best pop, Amanda. God, look at me. I'm just a mess. <laughs> Let's see. G full glass of water. Oh, nope. It's over. It's over. It's over for good guys. Let me turn off the music. 
because it keeps playing. And I won't stop playing until I turn it off. There we go. Better. But yeah, this is the end of Dream Daddy. Well, like, I, I think if I continue the story file, like, I could, like, go back to a previous story file and change what I've done, but... Knowing that Craig kind of ghosts me at the end. Wow, I'm kind of, I'm really disappointed. I'm super sad. God damn it. I have a different dating game that I won't play right away, but I play eventually. But it, it's about pigeons or something. So, um, maybe one day we'll get back into it. But for now, I think I'm... I'm not happy where we left off. I'm happy the game uh, the game's over at least. <laughs> yeah, pigeons. It's a pigeon dating game, so uh, I'll definitely play that as well. I'm not happy where we left off. I'm happy it's done in that sense. I don't have to be disappointed about it anymore. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I'll send you the Discord as well. <laughs> And thanks, thanks for popping by and watching. Really appreciate you guys sticking around and chatting with me. And thank again, Inky, for the follow. And you guys have all been really awesome. I hope to see you again tomorrow or sometime this week. I stream Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. PST. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll say goodbye. And that's about it. Also, there was this nice stream. It was nice to meet you and the chat. Well, thank you. And thank you for the stream. I had fun. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I'll play my ending now.